All right, everybody, welcome to this webinar on teaching in group lessons. So some of you are coming in who have never taught group lessons before, and some of you have taught group lessons and are looking for ideas on how to teach groups more effectively. So I'll share some of my background. Uh, let me start by just sharing my screen. And we have some slides here. I'll go ahead and just get started. So there is power in teaching in groups. And um, go ahead and start with this quick tour of Piano Marble. Aaron, share your audio. Yeah, let me start that over then. Let's see, we've got the audio sharing. Thanks for catching that. Share audio. Ah, found it. Okay, here we go. Piano Marvel is more than just sheet music. Piano Marvel was designed by piano teachers and is used by schools, universities, and enthusiasts all over the world. With over 25,000 songs and exercises combined with powerful learning tools, Piano Marvel is the ultimate piano learning system. Piano Marvel is also available on these devices. Now, let's go take a look at how you're going to learn faster when using Piano Marvel. Piano Marvel has hundreds of features, but right now, I want to show you the three main features that are going to change how you practice piano. These are learn, practice, and play. Learn unleashes one of the best kept piano practice secrets of all time. This is the same technique that's used by piano teachers across the globe. When using it, you'll see that music gets separated into smaller sections that are easier to learn. By learning music like this, you'll be practicing like the pros and learning pieces in much less time. So next is practice. Practice will help you learn notes and note patterns in the most efficient and effective way. Watch as I learn the notes of this song. When I'm playing correctly, you'll notice that the note heads will turn green, and this allows me to keep moving on. However, when I play incorrectly, you'll notice that the red dots show up telling me what I just played. At this point, I'm basically stuck until I can play what I'm supposed to. After you've played through the exercise, you'll notice that you get a notification showing important feedback about your performance. This is gonna help guide you through any song that you're learning. Once you're getting an estimated score of around 100%, then you know it's time to play. Unlike practice, play will score you on both note and rhythm accuracy. Using this feedback, you can quickly correct any mistakes before they turn into bad habits. The green notes are gonna show you what you've played correctly, and the red notes will show you your mistakes. Best of all, your high score will get saved to help keep track of everything that you've mastered. So now that you have a pretty good grasp on how to use Piano Marvel, I'm going to show you how to navigate it. To do that, we'll first need to go to the dashboard. The dashboard is the first place you go after logging into Piano Marvel. From here, you can easily navigate to the four main music sections of the app, which are Method, Technique, Library, and Sight Reading. Let me quickly walk you through what each of these sections are and why you want to use them. Method and Technique are where you want to go to build and strengthen all of those piano playing skills. The library is where you go to learn from over 25,000 songs and exercises. Hey, but don't worry if you can't find what you're looking for. We even offer the ability to upload your own music. The last section I'd like to talk about is the sight reading section, also known as the Sasser. The Sasser is the only sight reading assessment of its kind and is a great practice tool. As you can see, there's lots for you to explore in Piano Marvel. Whether you're beginning or advanced, we're here to help you along the journey of becoming a better pianist. All right, how do I get to the next slide? There we go. Okay, so we have a, a question that I'd like to pose to everybody here. So if you've never done a poll in Zoom, we should be able to do this now. I'm going to, let's see if I can stop sharing my screen. Um, and then I'll go to polls and I'm going to ask everybody a question really quickly. The question, I believe will just show up for you guys. All 
right. So the first question I'm going to ask, if I can find my polls, the polls up, oh, they moved to a different spot. Okay, so the question, I'm going to launch and let me know if you see it. It says, why are you interested in teaching in groups? Does everybody see that one? Yep. All right, so go ahead and answer that. The, the first one is make lessons more fun. The second one is make lessons more effective. The third one is take more students. And the fourth one is to save time. And it'll be really interesting to see why people are interested in, in taking or doing group lessons. I will say something really interesting that I found when we sent this email out to the MTNA group, I was very surprised. Uh, I expected about 20 people to join this webinar. Instead, we got over 350 people who said they wanted to come to this webinar. And um, we had a good mix of different different people. One of them was a group of university professors. And I think we had 85 university professors. We had uh, 250 people who also teach, uh, either they're teaching both at the university and private piano, um, but the private lessons group. And then there were, I think, large studios. There was about 20 large studios. Um, and I think there was another group. Um, anyway, it was it's really interesting to see how many people are interested in this. It looks to me like more people are interested in making lessons more fun than anything else. The making lessons more effective, we got 25%, 26% is taking on more students. And I guess the least interested thing is saving time. So it sounds like everybody's got lots of time. They're just trying to make lessons more fun or more effective. So let me go ahead and end this poll and see if I can start another poll. So do you teach in groups already? Go ahead and answer this question. We have 59%, 16, 40. So 60% already teach in groups and 40% do not. And it looks like it's hovering right around that number with 78 answers, 79 answers. Okay, so that's a really good one. Josh, maybe you should take some notes of these, these statistics. Um, so almost 60% are already teaching in groups. Okay, the next question is, do you own a digital piano? Go ahead and answer that. Do you own zero digital pianos? Do you own one, two, three to four, or five plus? So only 17% of the teachers don't own a digital piano. And I'm surprised like, um, how many people own, 21% own five or more digital pianos already. Josh, can you take maybe a little screenshot of that, those numbers? And tell me when you're done. Done. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next question, which is one-on-one -on -one versus group lessons. In which environment do students learn in your, in your experience? In which environments do students learn more effectively? One-on-one -on -one lessons or in group lessons? Go ahead and answer that one. This is a super interesting question. Okay, we got about, can you take a screenshot of that one there, Josh? 
75% of you in your experience feel like they learn more effectively or yeah, it's more effectively one-on-one -on -one lessons. Okay, let's move on to the next question. This one is sight reading versus technique. Which is more important to you? Teaching students to read music, teaching students to sound good, or I cannot decide. Go ahead and answer this question. Hmm. And then once we get about to 78 or so, go ahead and pause that. Okay, Josh, can you take a picture of that one? So this is interesting. The 36% of you said teaching students to read, 24% said teaching students to sound good. And then I'm assuming those who said, I can't decide between the two, meaning you hold them equally as valuable. Excellent. Okay, I think that's the end of those results. Um, I would like to go ahead and introduce our guests today. I need to go back to sharing my screen. And let's pull up the slide where we have our guests. Um, Josh, are you able to see my screen? Yep. Okay, so we have Dr. Jared Pierce, who teaches at Brigham Young University, and he is in charge. One of his jobs there is teaching group piano, and he has um, the proficiency exams that he's in charge of, and he maybe he can tell you how many students run through his program. Um, we've also we also have a private studio teacher who's now been doing groups for a long time. Her name is Cindy White. And then we have Josh Harris, who is teaching at a high school group. He's a high school group instructor, and we'll be able to hear from him. I think we're going to go ahead. Jared said he has till 930. So we need to go ahead and start with Jared. So Jared, would you be able to go ahead and just tell your experience of utilizing Piano Marvel in your groups and how that it, it has helped? Happy to. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, yeah. Everyone hear me okay? Sorry, I'm getting a call, spam call. Um, so here at BYU, we have uh, a very large piano program. We usually have about 12 classes per semester. Uh, I should say 12 sections and four different classes. Um, that's split between piano proficiency classes for music majors and two classes, which are just for enrichment for non-majors. Um, these classes are usually about 20 students at a time and they're taught between myself and we also have a small army of five to seven graduate assistants who also assist me in this. Um, they're very fun classes. They've been happening here at BYU for many years. I taught in them when I was a graduate pianist myself. Um, but when I started here in 2016, we decided, I decided we wanted to try something a little different. I had met Aaron uh, and the folks at Piano Marble, I think just the year before, and decided this is what I want to do. So we started the program. We incorporated all of BYU's uh, uh, current uh, things that we were learning. We, we were able to put all of the books into Piano Marble. And so everything that we were learning before, we were now learning in Piano Marble. And it gave us some really interesting statistics to be able to track between how were students doing before as how are they doing now with Piano Marble. Um, and it was fascinating to see the improvements that came out of that. Um, I, I think it's interesting, the questions that you're asking this, mor uh, this morning, Aaron. Um, I think, uh, as many people are saying, it depends on the student, how well they learn in group settings versus not. Um, of course, at the university level, we're going to have a wide range. We even have some of our Piano Marble, our Piano majors uh, using this program for sight reading needs. But I would say that the biggest benefits that we've experienced at BYU from using this program is those issues which we normally had to spend so much time on, uh, be it notes, be it accuracy, be it rhythm, uh, on a large class of 20, 
uh, we don't have to run around as much fixing and putting out fires like we used to. Now a lot of that is done and we can work on the finer points of musicianship. We can just fix fingerings. Um, we can help them to understand things that we never had time to do before in a 50 minute lesson. Um, and the graduate assistants are infinitely grateful for the amount of time it cuts down on grading. And I'm sure you'll talk more about that in this seminar or in this uh, lecture. But I, I think that Piano Marvel has really eased the burden of such a large group piano program. And it's enabled us to grow even more. We're about to move into a brand new building in uh, January of next year. We're actually gonna grow up to 22 instruments now in our lab. Um, not to put any more pressure on the graduate <laughs> assistants. Uh, but I do think that it's going to be perfectly feasible and possible for them because of Piano Marvel. Piano Marvel really streamlines the process. It makes it so easy for them. The grading is much easier to get through. And one thing that's really fantastic to see is how fast the students move through the material. We used to have you know, X number of things in the chapter and we'd only be able to fit this much into the requirements for what we would have them turn in at the end of a chapter. Now, we're able to give them pretty much the entire list because Piano Marvel moves so quickly. The interface is such a fast moving process that the students just eat it up, it's fast. Um, so it, it hasn't in any way replaced me as a teacher or my graduate assistants. We still really have a great time. In fact, I think we have a better time. But the process now of helping the students get from point A to point B has become so much more streamlined. It makes perfect sense to these young kids who most of them, I can't believe it, are college students and were born in like 2003 or four. <laughs> it seems strange, um, but it, it is an amazing thing to see. So we're really enjoying it here at BYU. Did you find that there was a learning curve for your graduate assistants to, to teach with the technology? Um, I, I remember a story that you said where one of your TAs was, was feeling like, she didn't have anything to do and you you told me a story like hey then you're doing it wrong like here's you should be using it as a tool and it's not a crutch yeah well here was the funny thing about that student this student was recognizing i think the ability of piano marble to help students learn so quickly that she would come to class and she would say all right go ahead and get started and then she'd noticed by halfway through the class that they had finished most of the assignments already. And she was like, do I need to do any? I don't know. I mean, she was a young graduate assistant. And I said, there's still a lot for you to do. Don't just leave them alone. <laughs> Certainly help them understand the finer points of musicianship, help them understand proper posture, help them understand the fingering and go through the exercises with them. So they're not just getting all the notes right and they're playing it with proper execution. Um, and once she learned how to do that, I think she really enjoyed having this partnership with Piano Marvel rather than seeing it as the thing that makes her just sit back and read her novel, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so and then you're, you're able to, to tell jokes with the students and play around with them. You're able to do ensembles with them and, and structure your class in, in whatever way you want to. So you can still personalize everything. You just use it as a tool, as your best buddy to like do the, the repetitive stuff that computers are best at. Yeah, it does the heavy lifting, you know, if I can put it into a easy terms. I mean, all the things that honestly, we would get fatigued in a group piano class, Piano Marvel does that aspect of it, which is really nice. Um, now it's we just do the fun things. Uh, and then when we get to that point at the end of the lecture, I mean, I can usually get a lecture done in 15 to 20 minutes, and the rest of the class, they can work. And the things that the students really enjoy is we used to have a requirement every day you need to get an hour outside of class per day of practice that has come down to about 30 minutes because wow. they get so much of what they need to do for the class everything in my book done while they're in class and so some of them are still there after class and still finishing up things and still working hard but a lot of them are flying through so quickly so it's really made the process faster it's freed up a lot of time in the group piano labs uh, now I just have to learn to kick the piano majors out of there from trying to use it as a practice room. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, I wonder if uh, anybody has some questions for Jared while we have him a few more minutes. I saw one question come in for you, Dr. Pierce. It was, um, what kind of are, are your students complete beginners? And we have some people weighing in, uh, like Melinda Barros, uh, who, hey, Melinda, how are you? Uh, but yeah, I'd love to hear your answer on that, if you could please, sir. 
Sure. So good question. Um, we have our Music 113 class, which is intro to piano. It's absolutely basic for beginners, starting with quarter notes and moving forward. Um, and they do extraordinarily well with it. I mean, they, they're able to get through the basics and feeling of piano uh, really well with Piano Marvel. Um, but we also have students who are coming in who are very advanced. And I'm sure Aaron's gonna talk about the Sasser technology. Um, we had here at BYU the highest Sasser score. Uh, and I don't know, I think it's probably changed. <laughs> it's, but more people have taken it and it's gone up. But it's, it's been fun to see our piano major, majors uh, trying to improve their sight reading abilities, reading through very advanced pieces of music going through this. Uh, so yes, we've had uh, students of all ages. When we, when we get into the, the highest group piano classes, um, those are students who are, they're probably playing intermediate repertoire to early advanced repertoire. But I'll tell you, here's the reason why I really wanted Piano Marvel. When I first taught here at, at BYU as graduate assistant, I had a flute performance major who just looked like she was upset every day in class. And I said, can I help you? Is there something wrong? She said, I'm just bored. I knew all of this. And I was really hoping I could learn more. And so I decided I was gonna help this student. I worked with her every day outside of class. I gave her additional assignments. I, I gave her Chopin preludes and nocturnes and she loved that. And I thought, how can I get that into all the other students who are feeling the same way? Piano Marvel makes that possible. And after we do an early Sasser test, and again, I'm sure Aaron will talk about this, I can easily identify which of those students need that kind of instruction. And I can base their experience around that. And it makes it so that the students who come into this class who are not beginners, not at the same level, because 20 different people are not all the same, I am able to help tailor it towards them. And it's so easy to do. It's just as simple as dropping their music into their box and off they go. You know, that's a, a great story, Jared. Um, I remember I was able to come up to BYU and, and do a class with one of your TAs. And it was for a class that was beginners like it was like they don't know where middle c is and so i recommended to the ta that we do a sasser test and she said we can't do that because they don't know how to read anything i mean this is a beginner class and so i said well wouldn't it be nice then to show them how bad they are <laughs> take the test see how low their score is and then after you know, like in three weeks have them take it again and show them how much they've improved like that that shows the student hey look i've come from point a to point b and she said that sounds great so we started testing them and we were shocked because some of those students in her beginning class were reading over 700 in the sasser and she was like wait a minute my whole lesson format was geared around teach you know starting with middle c these kids are going to be so bored like they're reading better than some piano majors and so it was really like you said you know instantly give them a test and you know where they are with their reading so you're not wasting their time and you can allow them to move at their own pace and I, and I certainly don't make the class so much harder on myself by having 10 different things going on um, I still teach the same class I still tailor to those whom the class is designed for but for those cases in which there's maybe three or four in a class I tell them Look, you're welcome to go up to the next class. You're welcome to, to withdraw from the class or drop a class. But if you'd like, I can help you here. And I can easily just drop some things in there for them, give them individual technical, uh, sight reading, whatever it might be, repertoire requirements. And more out, I would say eight out of 10 times they stay because they wanna learn. They don't wanna be bored. They don't wanna have to miss the, the chance. And so often I would just think students hate being here. It's not that, they just don't want the, their time wasted. And piano yeah. to not feel like their time is being wasted. Speaking of time, yeah, that, I got to go teach a class. So yes, it's been, that's it's great. We appreciate you coming in, and we we may uh, like if some other questions come up, we'll go ahead and just email them to you, and maybe you can answer them, and we'll just email them to everybody who asked. Thank you. Thanks. For Thank you so much, Jared. Have a good one, everyone. All right. So our our next. Um, the next one I would like to hear from is uh, Josh Harris, because he teaches at an elementary, sorry, at a, at a high school. And so this is a little bit different. Um, and we'd like to go ahead and just start, I think, with a quick interview that Joel Shiflett did with, with Josh Harris. He decided to travel to his school 
and see what he was doing and interview these students. And so I'd like to have um, show this video and then have Joel take over from here. As a classroom teacher, when you have 22 students in one classroom, you can't give them the support that they need without some kind of technology tool like Piano Marvel. Piano Marvel provides that constant support. Of the students that I've gotten that had private lessons, 90% of them have preferred this setting. There's all the tools in Piano Marvel. The fact that they get to go at their own pace makes them feel like they're more relaxed with it. The practice mode helps. If there's a ledger line note that I have no clue what it is, I can search for that note using practice mode. Without Piano Marvel, I just don't think I'd be as far as I am. It keeps me like on my toes. I have two weeks to finish a piece. I'll get the piece done in a week. Like, I love this. <laughs> Piano Marvel kind of made it easy to like figure out how to learn things, um, if that makes sense. Um, and so it made me not as nervous because I was like, I don't know how I'm going to learn piano, like what? Um, but Piano Marvel made that like really easy to do. It kind of breaks things up for you in a way that it's easy to digest. That way it's not overwhelming. My last Sasser score was an 806, but my highest Sasser score is an 845. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I joke that it's my teaching assistant. I would highly recommend that anybody in a classroom setting, if you have a piano program, find a way to use Piano Marvel. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Joel, would you go ahead yeah. and take over since you were the one that actually got to see it in action? I think of Josh Harris as a pioneer who's done things that have previously been impossible teaching in this industry for a long time. I'm shocked after after you came back and showed me what he was doing. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, could we <clears throat> could we spotlight me and also Josh? I think Josh is here, right? Yes. Hey, Josh. Good to see you. How's it going? Good, good. Yeah, so, um, you know, we had been hearing about some things that Josh Harris was doing down in, in uh, he's in, in Lubbock, Texas. Um, and uh, we just thought, wow, this sounds really amazing. And we'd like to kind of get to check it out some more. So um, uh, actually took a visit down there to Lubbock to see what was going on and see what they're doing. And uh, some of those video clips you just saw <clears throat> were uh, taken on that trip. And so um, basically, I just wanted to give Josh a few minutes to, you know, he's been doing group piano now, what is it, about eight years? Is that right? Yes. And, my eighth and yeah. And uh, anyway, um, you know, the amount of experience uh, because of his position there, he's, he's taught a lot of group piano. And I thought, well, the, you know, Josh, in, in my mind, is one of the, the experts uh, in, in this field. And so um, just wanted to give Josh a, a few minutes to kind of talk about, um, you know, some of the things he's learned through the years, his years of experience of doing group piano and, and, and some of the benefits of, of group piano teaching and uh, versus, um, say, traditional one on one teaching and, and some things like that. All right. So I'm glad you all showed that video because it kind of shows a little bit in the setting what it looks like because I'm on vacation right now. So I'm I'm not even able to show you the uh, my classroom um but um that covered several things that i was going to be talking about but um i wanted to kind of discuss you know i've been doing this for um at this school for eight years i did teach some private um piano for several years before that um and of those eight years i've used piano marvel for about six of them so there are about two years that i uh, before i've discovered piano marvel that i was um teaching classes here. And um, so the school that I'm teaching at is an all girl um, sixth through 12th grade. So it's not actually just high school. It's a middle and high school. So sixth through 12th grade um, magnet school. And um, so the way that we structure our classes is that um, we have the beginner students. So any students that are that have never played piano before are in their own classes. And then any student that is in, that is doing their second year of piano or up um, are mixed into the same classes. And so, um, uh, and then occasionally if I have a beginner student that really wants to take piano, but they can't fit in one of the beginner classes, then they will, then I'm okay with them going into the, um, the mixed class. Uh, but as everyone knows, beginning students need a little more attention than, um, than non-beginner students. Um, and so what I like to talk about is the two years that I had did piano class before I discovered Piano Marvel. Um, I used to have try to have students um, go into classes in the same level 
Um, and so if I had students that were in a level three, I tried to put all the level three students in the same class and all level four students in the same class. Um, it was difficult to schedule that way. Um, and then um, what I would discover is that when you, I would I'd give them one piece that we'd work on for a week and then um, they'd assess on that at the end of the week. And what I'd discover is that um, they would, you know, you'd have students that are not ready by the end of the week. You're trying to push them too fast. And then you also have students that are, you know, they have it done by day two of working on it. And so you're holding them back, which you never want to hold a student back and really you don't want to push a for student forward who's not ready to go forward. And so um, um, what I discovered with Piano Marvel, and I've built a, a system around um, using the Piano Marvel curriculum, um, is that students, you'll have students that just skyrocket um, really high, uh, really quickly. Um, and then you'll have students that need a little more time to be able to work through the, um, through the curriculum. And doing it in a group setting and self-paced um, gives them the opportunity to be able to do that. You don't hold them back, but you also don't um, push them forward before they're ready. I'm very, always very concerned with the mastering the content, however long it takes for them to, to master it. Um, and so, Am I able to share my screen? You are, yes. Okay, I wanted to show something real quick. So um, the way I'm able to... It looks to me like your video's frozen. Okay, it looks like we're on now. Go yeah. ahead. Okay, so <laughs> I, I showed this to my students at the beginning of each school year. So this is how I, um, I do self-paced instruction with students of all different levels. Like I said, I could have beginning students in the same class as students that are qualifying for state solo ensemble competition. Um, and so what I've done is I have them um, watch an instructional video. So I, um, um, you know, Dr. Jared, he was talking about how he um, still tries to kind of teach them together. I, I don't do at the, like at the front of the class, you know, leading, a single lesson because when you have 20, I can have up to 22 students in a classroom because I have 22 keyboards. And when you do that, you can't um, teach one lesson at the front of the room with 22 students in the room. They're all at different levels. And so I've um, set it up so they, um, what they'll do is they'll watch a video that gives them what they need for, to know for the next piece that they're going to be working on in Piano Marble. Um, I have them complete. I always print out the music for them. So that's another cool thing um, is that, you know, gives you access to the, the Piano Marvel curriculum, um, the method books. I really love them. I was um, I was curious when I first started this, if I was going to like it as well as some other um, method books that I'd used. And really, it's become my favorite method book to use. It's very well paced. Um, and so I print that out for them to be able to um, write stuff in as they watch the, vi the videos. Uh, they'll practice the piece okay, in Piano Marvel, and then as they practice the piece in Piano Marvel, um, I'm going to tell them to get at least a 97% or better, okay, because I always tell them that um, you don't want to go to, you know, a, a concert and hear the singer sing 80% of the notes right. We as musicians are expected to, to have very high level of performance, and so 97% or better, after they do that, they submit that to me. Um, so that I know that they are um, ready to play it for me. And then we have certain days of the week that they come up and they'll come play individually for me. And so, um, and then after they've done that, then they just start that cycle over. So however fast they are able to go through that cycle, um, they, you know, they can, it doesn't hold them back, doesn't push them forward. They can just continue that cycle um, over and over. And um, so as far as, uh, I think I said this in the video, but um, I've had students come in that have had private lessons before. Um, a couple of things about that. Uh, the Sasser, the sight reading um, component, is great for figuring out where they're at. Because um, sometimes you have a student that says, oh, I've been playing for five years. And, you know, you, you know, try to assess them and you find out, oh, yeah, this student really knows their stuff. They know a lot. But sometimes you get a student that says they've been playing for five years and they can't hardly read, you know, middle C. And so the Sasser um, gives me an idea of, okay, where do we need to start with you? So we're not, so you're not bored. We're not putting you at a beginner level when you know something. Um, but it, you know, it's one of those things that as a teacher, it's hard to gauge when you have someone come in that has had previous lessons. And so the Sasser really helps with that. And yeah. then uh, and just, just for clarification, yeah. for anybody that doesn't know that the Sasser is a sight reading test that that uh, you know we've kind of developed there, and uh, 
it's a great way to get a measurement of how well do they read music so that way we can understand um, a bit more about um, where they're at as a, in, in their music journey. Yeah, and, and, and I want to just mention too, one of the things I was really impressed with when I visited your school was how many of the kids were reading at a, at a high level. Um, I was really blown away by that because it's not common. Um, I don't think there was a single student that I saw that was um, reading below about a level three. And these are including your first year yeah. Um, you know, sixth graders, which I thought that's that's amazing, you know, to see that level of reading coming out of these students and doing that all in a group piano setting yeah. was also to me just uh, doubly impressive because I thought, it, you know, the, it, traditionally, you know, uh, in, in the way that I was taught and, and a lot of other people, you think always that you, you, there's kind of this idea that one on one lessons is always the best solution. And um, I think that there are scenarios where um, a class setting can be highly effective in helping to develop some of these skills. And, and that doesn't mean necessarily that every single student and every single skill is handled perfectly, you know, necessarily in um, this kind of um, environment. But I was very impressed with how just how effective um, you, you, you were able to be with, um, a large number of students. I think you're, what is it around 140 students that you yeah, see every 130, 140 between seven class periods each day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and to, to, to walk out of there and see just, uh, you've got 140 kids all reading, um, above a level three, uh, mm -hmm. in, in, and, um, and working on and uh, music that, you know, I would have, normally thought would take you know several years of piano lessons and you've got these beginning sixth grade students uh playing and and so to me it was just very eye-opening very uh to to see that i'd never imagined that group piano lessons could be that effective and so can i i, I, can I uh, mention one thing joel joel when he came back he told me your scores on the test and I was blown away because I've done a lot of testing at universities. Would you like to know how your scores compare to like a lot of universities? Absolutely. So I do a lot of testing. They pass piano proficiency exam, which part of that is that they have to sight read. And I'm always surprised to say, hey, now that you've passed piano proficiency, I want to give you a Sasser test and see where you're reading. Their scores are often between 210 and 350. Man. So you are preparing these students to come in already more advanced than a lot of universities are producing their yep. students at the end of their two years. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's just, it was an amazing thing. And if, and if any of you have the opportunity to, if you're ever going to Lubbock, Texas, like hit Josh up. He's, he's got an amazing, like, just go and see what he's doing there. It's absolutely incredible. Absolutely. Yes. I'm, I'm happy to, to help out any way I can. Um, anybody that wants to know how to use the use piano Marvel effectively. Um, like I've, I've spent six years developing, you know, system, um, to have students all, all be able to learn at the same time. I, it's interesting that you bring the Sasser thing because, uh, that really came out of, um, several years ago, um, after one year of using Piano Marvel, you know, I was I was really happy. Um, whenever I take my students to contest, they would do really well. Um, but I wasn't happy with how long it would take them to learn a piece of music. So I was happy with their performance, but not with how long it was taking. So we really started focusing on doing the Sasser, and so we do um, the Sasser once a week. Um, and so, and I just kind of ass assess them on the Sasser based on where they're at in Piano Marvel, and tell them they should be, you know, within a certain level of where you are in piano marble um and so it just keeps their reading skills i think what um, I've, I've noticed is uh students that are working on like high level music don't always you know we have them working on one piece one big piece for a long time and we don't realize but their reading skills start going down some because they're not actively using those reading skills all the time they're using more performance skills to learn that big piece of music and so having that mixture of, okay, we may be working on a big piece because I have students that, you know, like I said, qualify for state solo and ensemble, but I still have them working on their, their sight reading. 
with the sasser each week and that kind of keeps that fresh in their mind excellent i know people are going to have lots of questions for you josh we're going to run out of time so what i'd, yep, I'd like to i need to switch gears here and if people have questions go ahead and just put them in the chat and josh will collect them and we'll send them over to josh harris so that he can uh respond to those and we'll email those back to you absolutely um what I'd like to discuss now, let me go ahead and just share my screen, Josh, if you could make, Josh Mills, I should say, if you could go ahead and switch that over. Um, we, I want to talk really quickly about one of the things that you guys did on, what did we say, 75% of you felt like you could learn, teach more effectively one-on-one -on -one than you could in groups. Now, I have, I thought the same thing because my previous experience with teaching in groups was exactly that. Like I could teach them more effectively one-on-one -on -one if I could spend the time. But now with the new technology that is completely switched around, I can teach faster and more effectively in groups than I can one-on-one. -on -one. So my best students, I'm always putting in groups um, because there's a synergy that we can do. There's more things we can do. They, they can learn with the technology. It buys me time so that I can teach independently um, while other students are working. It took me a while to learn how to do it, but here's an interesting thought. Think about how the tractor has changed our world where one machine can go in and do the thing that it used to take one person doing that a tractor can probably do a thousand times the work well we are now entering into a new era of piano pedagogy where machines are able to do better than humans at certain things and so if you let technology do what it does best and then teach the te let teachers do what they do best, you will be able to accomplish more than you ever imagined. A couple of things that work with technology. Um, it's fun, it's available 24 seven. It goes where the student goes. It's great at repetitive tasks. It gives highly accurate feedback and provides high level of engagement. Now a teacher is best at teaching artistry, expression, emotion, accountability, creating connections, and facilitating. Um, and so when you when a teacher can leverage the technology, they're able to accomplish way more than you ever could before we had this technology. Imagine a farmer who is really set on what they do works really well, and then somebody decides to come up with a tractor and they buy the tractor because they like the idea of being able to do it in much less time, save them time and money and, and be able to do much more. But then they never learn how to drive the tractor. So the tractor just sits in their garage and they go back to picking peas and beets by hand. Um, that's what we often do as piano teachers. We do not spend enough time on research and development. And that's what you guys are here to do is to learn how to do research and development. Let me show you a slide if I can find it. Um, are group lessons effective? This is not the one. Where is that slide that talks about research and development? I think you passed it. Did I pass it? Maybe. It has a it's hiding somewhere. Maybe at the end. Okay, this is this is uh, the slide on how much more money you can make. Um, regardless, if you learn how to use the technology, you can actually teach faster in groups. Now, what's another reason people want to, wanted to um, do groups? Well, in large part, it's because you can make more money or you can save time. So let me show you this spreadsheet here, if I can find this. We created a spreadsheet just to help you kind of envision this a little. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. Let's say your rate is $120 per month 
for your students. And you're teaching one student at a time. And let's say you do a 3.30 lesson. Um, you fill that slot, and that means you make $120 a month. If you fill your 4.30 slot, you make another 120 and you fill your 5.30 slot. So you work, let's say, just three lessons a week, three hours, and you make $360 for the month. If you were to do that five days a week, you would make $1,800 for the month and you'd be teaching 15 students. But let's say you did a class and you were able to get two digital pianos and work simultaneously with students. That would change your income to $3,600 per month and you were able to handle 30 students but not teaching more than three hours a week. Sorry, three hours a day. Um, I personally, I have a station where I do six, um, but some people prefer four, and some of my classes are just four people. I don't always fill my whole class, but having four, and if I were to only teach 15 hours a week, then I would be making $7,200 for the month and only teaching 15 hours a week. Um, that actually is one of the things that teachers do in order to teach 60 students, if they're teaching them one on one for 30 minutes, they're usually teaching into the late hours of the night. Um, some, some are lucky and they can do it during school because they do online or they do, uh, uh, homeschooled students, but the majority of students are in school and they can't start until after school. And then if you have family, then you don't have any family time. So it makes it really appealing to be able to teach them in groups because you can handle that and be done with work and you're not overwhelmed, you're not tired, and you have time to develop, uh, do your research and development and improve your lessons. And so if you would invest in research and development, learn how to use the tools and leverage them, you will end up being so much happier. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about my experience. Oh, and also let me let me also show you the the thing that I gave you, the handout, which is starting group piano ideas. I want to run through this. You'll find this in the chat. I think it's at the very top. If you're watching this rerun through the video, you'll find it in the link, the description link at the bottom. So I'll go through this. There's a teacher training where we help teachers become very effective teachers leveraging the technology. You don't have to figure it out on your own. It took me years and years. You can learn it in months. Um, this course is usually typically takes about three to six weeks, depending on how much time you want to put into it. But it is a phenomenal course. And right now it's only $75. You just go into your form and you click on this. And then it'll take you to that where you can where you can sign up for for the little. This the is a, a relevant thing. Um, I just finished the group group piano specific training early that is cool. in the morning. So <laughs> okay, so so we'd have a specific a group piano training course, and if you buy this course, you actually get all of our courses for free. Um, and you'll get Michelle, I think is the one who is running those courses, but she will walk you through everything, answer your questions. We're very, we have a, somebody who assigned to you to help you whenever you get started. Your setup um, can look in a lot of different ways. I personally have tried with you lots of them. This one is my very favorite because I'm able to, from the back of the classroom, watch everybody simultaneously what they're doing. Um, the setup, what pianos do you get? What keyboards do you get? We have some recommendations for you on what different things. And I give you my advice here. You click on this, this uh, recommended keyboards and you'll see that there are a lot of different options here, starting with the cheapest one, which is just a little budget keyboard. Actually, some, a lot of my students have that. The uh, second one up, this is the one, this is the cheapest one that I would get if I were building a studio. And then I would quickly sell that to a student and upgrade in my lab to this one, which is the Roland. Um, this is the 501, but I think it's the 701 that's out right now. And then this is the, the best one. If you can afford that one, it's about $2,700. It's 
Currently, the 735 is the newest one, but it is amazing. This is the, the best instrument that I would recommend. You can also connect to your piano, like if you want to put this on your grand piano. And I have two grand pianos, and they each have this on there. Thank you. Um, now we have teachers who who try to start this out and they have questions about how do I connect it to a piano? What do I buy? We have a teacher, Cindy White, who is a private teacher and she decided to go ahead and start classes. And I'd like you to hear about how she's doing it um, because she's become an expert at being able to run group classes and her students love it. You may have questions for her, like how can I charge the same rate in a group as I can individually? Well, if you're able to teach just as fast and the students are learning more, then why would you charge less? Cindy, would you like to go ahead and um, talk about your experience with how you started group lessons and the learning curve, the, the cost, how much you charge students, um, how did you get the setup with your digital pianos and, and all of that? Great. Well, welcome. Um, I'm in California, so good morning. I um, was teaching out of my home and then we bought a new home with that in mind. It was perfect for, for what I was doing. And then the HOA decided that I wasn't allowed to teach out of my home. So I was forced to do something and to do it fast. And this was right before COVID. I was currently teaching some group classes at a music store of homeschoolers, and they required that it be in a group setting instead of one-on-one. -on -one. So I was using a, you know, I had group classes at a music store. So I talked to the owner of the music store and said, can I bring all of my students, which is about 50, can I bring all of my students here? And they were thrilled because of course more rent for them because it was based on students. but. I went straight to group. I didn't want to live at the music store and do one-on-one. -on -one, so we went straight to group. They gave me four digital pianos in the room to work with. And every student brings their own device, whether it's a laptop or a Chromebook or an iPad. I have all the cords, they know how to hook up. So they come a few minutes before class starts, they get hooked up, make sure everything's connected and working. And I leave 15 minutes between classes. I do hour classes. And I do, you know, three, four a day, uh, Monday through Thursday. I don't think I could ever go back to books. It is way too much fun doing what I do. And the kids have way more fun. So if a kid is having fun at piano, they're gonna stay and they're gonna actually go somewhere with it because it's fun. So for instance, when I taught before um, out of books, you know, you have your student, you come, they come, you teach them something, you model it, they, you know, you make sure they know it, they go home, they practice, they get confused, they practice wrong, they come back, you have to correct it, they have to redo it, and nobody's happy. But here with Piano Marvel, I don't make them come and play for me, I can see exactly what's happened. If they got that 100%, which is what I require in my studio, they're done, we're moving on. When they come to my class, and they're starting, I don't say, would you please do, you know, one through five in method and one through five in technique. I say, go, go as fast as you can, as far as you can. And that allows me to see what kind of student I have too, because some of them will do that. And they'll come back having finished one A and one B in one week. And then I'll have others that are a little bit more on the slower end and that's fine because everybody with Piano Marvel can go their own their own speed, which they're comfortable with. Um, so the way my classes are formed, the students are usually within a two level range and within a five year range of age so that everybody feels you know, pretty comfortable in their situation. Um, so a, a typical day might look like they come in, they get their devices set up. I'll have them check their rank. And what I'm actually asking them to do is to check the points, which you can see on Piano Marvel. They can see how much progress they made through the week. Now, if they went up in method and technique, even if it was just a little bit, they each have a chart and we celebrate, they write in their numbers, they get stickers. And if they went up 
in both method and technique, then they get to put their name on the board that's behind me. And I'll actually show you these things in just a second. Um, under the sign that says, I can do hard things. Because taking piano is hard. Think about all the things that they're doing. You know, they have to work 10 fingers and they have to memorize, you know, they have to know keys and they have to be able to read music. And Piano Marvel takes a lot of the pain out of that because when they're practicing at home, they are practicing really well because they're not making mistakes. The computer tells them what they're doing. So they fix them immediately. They can fix them quick. The rhythm isn't a problem. The parents aren't shouting from the kitchen. That doesn't sound right. You know, they've got their own piano cop on their shoulder with piano marble. Takes the edge off of parents. You know, there's less stress with parents because they know if they're using their piano marble, they're actually, you know, doing a good job. Some of my students practice a lot every week and some practice just a little, but everybody is moving forward. And I always, you know, make sure that that's happening, that they're moving forward. We have, I'm gonna get up and actually show you, I came into where I teach early today so that I could show you a few things. Let me flip my screen, how do I do that? Here it is. Okay, so here are my students and we have this piano marble chart and it's fun for them to be able to move their face um, forward as they make progress. When they go from level 1E to 2A, then it's a big deal. We make a big deal out of that. And they get to visit, these are my favorite things, their favorite things, I should say. This drawer has little individual candies. And if they practice five days a week, they get three of those candies. If they, when they move a level, they get to come to this drawer. And this is, this is all the candy your mom never buys you at the grocery store, but you wish <laughs> that she would. And um, so that's one way they can go to the candy drawers. But this also here um, is a red ticket system where if they have practiced a hundred or more minutes and you can track that on the computer, I track that on the computer and print it out every week so we can check it. Um, if they've gone over a hundred minutes, they get a red ticket. They put their name on the back of the red ticket and then every day I pick a red ticket. Who's ever red ticket gets picked, they go to that drawer of the big candy. When they move that rank or the points, this is the, this is the thing that they get to move their name. So they start over here. And if they've got both stickers for method and technique, they get to put their name under the I can do hard things. This is just a very simple thing, but you'd be surprised I have students that really gravitate to this and they are determined to not move their name. They wanna be there every week. Piano Marvel has challenges every month and we love those, my students love them. And we hit some of them hard and others, you know, not so hard, but I have students that really, really love um, this. So with the Disney challenge that we won, we won a hundred dollar Amazon card, which was really fun. So, you know, what kind of treat do you get at Disneyland? You get churros. So we did churros for everyone. And then the top five students who did the most work in that challenge also got a helium Mickey balloon. So it was fun. Um, here's a, an example of what you can print out each uh, week. This is a total thing, so total class minutes. Um, let's see, this one is just my Wednesday students, but they did 1,314 minutes, just my Wednesday students. And you can see, I don't know if you can see, it's looking a little crazy on my screen, but um, some of my students practiced 400 minutes, 200 minutes, 100 minutes. And then I have, you know, those that just practice 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, over here, I have a chart. One other great thing, that helps me immensely in teaching is Piano Marvel's ability to help me keep track of theory and making sure I'm getting everything in there that should be taught. So when you're on Piano Marvel, you can go into the dashboard, click on method, and then you know click on 1A, and then there's a PDF of the actual book. And you can go in there and we do this. We put a plastic sheet over their device so they can use a dry erase marker. Let me get the cap off here. So 
sorry about that, dry erase marker where they can just put their answers right on there. They ring their bell when they're done and I check it really quick. And I'm able to have kids on lots of different levels doing their testing and doing reviews. I can put a paper like this with all the page numbers that they need to review and then the testing numbers. And again, they're all on their own spot. Sometimes it's a whole class thing and we're all doing the same thing, but a lot of times, you know, kids are in different spots. So they're all doing the different thing. This little bell here is very popular. When they get a hundred and they're practicing whatever, um, they always get to ring their bell when they get a hundred. And you know what? That's a little thing, but I have a bell at home and I ring it <laughs> when I'm playing. <laughs> and my husband laughs at that, but you know what? <laughs> it makes me feel good. So I do it. Okay, we have Hilarious. the current and like, you know, you all need a bell. Okay, so <laughs> we have the current challenge, which is the ninja one. And <clears throat> I just had to laugh at how my kids have taken off. I put up posters for each of the different ones. This is the five finger pentascales. And then we've got one for beginners and arpeggios and I'll add them as, as they you know start moving into those different posters. We, um, we have a lot of fun here. I have a lot of things where we can play games and do different things. Um, I don't know if you have familiarized yourself with a lady by the name of, uh, what's her name? Machiko Yorko. She does music mind games and I really love what she puts out. Um, and so I have over the years accumulated many of her things. We play a game called note speed, but we really call it beat the teacher because um, they like to beat me at this one. And they feel quite good about you know that if they beat me this is this is the primer one where it's just the alphabet but there's all different levels to where you get into the actual notes um different spots different target zones on the staff um, cindy will you be able to ask a couple of questions that teachers are having sure um sure. they want to know what age of students works well with piano marble four or five in my experience four is too young um, five-year-old, it depends on the student, but for me, it's six and above for sure. And then if I'll test them, if they're five years old and if they, they're learning well enough, I'll take them. What about you? Yeah, I agree with that. Um, I just demoed a lesson yesterday with, um, two siblings. One was five and a half. The other was eight and a half and the five and a half is pretty quiet. So we'll see how that goes. My granddaughter that I'll be starting remotely, she lives out of state. Um, she's turning six in July, but when she was visiting me this summer, she's totally ready and she's yeah. totally excited. So it really depends on the student. You know, um, how much do they know? Can they, you know, you, it's just very individual at those lower ages. Of course, second grade is a great age to start piano lessons. I have, um, five-year-olds up to high schoolers and they all love it and I don't know if I said this before but I have more boys than girls and that has never ever happened in my mm -hmm. plus years of teaching and I think it's the gaming aspect of Piano Marvel and that inner um, competition between them and the computer that keeps them there and yeah. and you end yeah. up doing less talking and more practicing more playing yeah yeah so when they're in here they're getting my individual time because I go around to everybody everybody's got headphones on and they're all working and I can plug my headphones in to that's the one question and that's one question people have is can you give individual attention to students and how does that look I can say when I first did classes I felt like teaching one-on-one -on -one was better but once I started leveraging the technology I had plenty of time to go and work with individuals one at a time, but it took me learning the technology really well before and training them how to use it so that they could work effectively away from me. And then everything changed. And then I had all the time in the world to work with students. Yeah. Yeah. My kids know how to work piano marble. I'm not babysitting them on that front at all. They learn it really quick and you do, you have time to um, just key into one student, you know, 
and focus on musicality. You can right. focus on phrasing. Oh. Let me hear this and hey. let me demo hey. it to you. That fingering is really awkward. Let's try this, you know. Um, wow, we've got flying fingers. Let's keep those fingers down. You know, there's lots that you do individually that the piano marvel cannot replace. Yeah. And I would say before I started using piano marvel, um, I would spend we tend to talk a lot as teachers, but um, you talk about this and that, and half of it just goes in one ear, out the other, because they're just not ready, and you you only have 30 minutes, so you start cramming stuff into the lesson, and you don't give them time to get it under their fingers. So what we end up doing is just watching them practice much of the lesson and spoon feeding, and I've watched a lot of teachers, and, and this is just normal through all teaching without the leveraging technology. You spend about 70 to 80% of your time watching them try what you told them to do, getting some stuff under their fingers, try this, try that. And you end up watching. Now you just tell them, Hey, get that thing done. And I'll be back when you ring your bell or whatever. Um, right. Let me know when you're ready. Exactly. Yeah. And um, my setup is similar to yours as that um, when I started I had them in the center of the room facing each other. So I had two pianos and then two pianos facing. And I did that for a long time. And then I decided this is just not doing it for me. So I moved them to the walls and it made a huge difference. We have all of the space in the middle now for. Yeah, I love the idea. It's not something that most teachers think to do, but put your pianos facing the wall. Yeah, and and they are more focused because they're not you know staring at somebody else. Also, I can stand in any part of the room and see everybody, everybody's hands, everybody's computer. It's a great setup. It's really a great is. setup. Yep. Okay. Um, I don't know if there's anything else, but that's about. Well, thank you so much. We really appreciate you sharing this with us. I am going to buy six bells for each of my pianos today. <laughs> I love the idea. It's, I can see how that will work really, really well. Okay, well, make sure you get the cute ones with the smiley faces. Okay, that I will do. I'm going to go over to Amazon <laughs> and pick those up. The uh, other thing that I wanted to share with you guys on your on your uh, presentation, I know we're running out of time, and I'm going to open it up to some questions here, but maybe some of your questions will be answered by this sheet. Okay, so I've opened this, this uh, handout that you have, and... I have these devices, listening system, connecting your device. Like, how do you connect your device? In 70 or no, only 12% of you don't have digital pianos. That means 88% of you do already, but maybe you don't know how to connect it. So all of this shows you and walks you through just what to buy and where to buy it. In so fact, go, all of this, all of this information is also in the group piano certification or course. So yeah. you can go through those lessons as well and find all this information there. Yeah. Um, I wanted to show you how easy it is for those of you who've never done this before. Check this out. Uh, where's my button to start? I got to hide this. You're in version history. Press the arrow on the back left. Oh, thank you. I don't know how I got there. Okay, slideshow. Okay, how do you connect to your device? It's probably easier than you imagine. Hey, I want to show you in 30 seconds how to set up Piano Marble. You will need a USB cable and an audio cable. So let's start with the USB. Plug one side into your computer, and then the other side, you'll plug into the back of your piano where it says USB. And then the audio you will plug into your headphone jack in your computer and on the back of your piano where it says audio input. Then test it out, see if it works. All you have to do now is plug in your headphones and you're set. Oh goodness, Jay, I can't. So that looks pretty easy. Um, that document will show you, like everybody's piano is going to be a little bit different. And I'd like to invite Joel to come in and show you my lab. And just the, because I use a bunch of different pianos, it's a mess right now because we're in summer and we're kind of redoing some things. But Joel, would you be able to come in?
and just show our lab and how we'd hook up different different things. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just heading over there right now, switching my camera around. Okay. One of us will need to be muted. Okay. Here we go, Josh. You can kind of let us know if it is all working. Everything's good. Um, we're. I've got my microphone on this this one, I think. So I got to stay a little close to this. But you saw how I hooked up to this Roland. This other one over here is uh, it's the one the one piano, and it only has one cable. You plug in this one cable right into your iPad, your iPhone, or your computer, and everything's done through that instead of the two cables, which is really nice. This next one over here is a Casio, and I'm going to have to grab my light for this one because they hit it. And when you're searching through your digital pianos to find this, you're going to have to go looking sometimes. So let's go looking for this one. All right. It looks like this is line one, or sorry, line in, and it's got two connections. So I need a cable that has two for that. And this is my MIDI in and MIDI out. I can use that. But they also have this one right here, if you can see it. It's a USB to host. You could use that one alternatively. These cables are cheaper, so I recommend these. Um, the Rollins have them in a different place. Yamaha will sometimes have it right up front here. So there'll be a little panel and you just plug it in there. So when, when you need some additional help, trying to figure out how to install or how to how to plug into your computer or you have any problem, let us know. Take a picture of us for us what what it looks like and we'll send you a link to the the um, to the cable that you need. We're very helpful. We have people who are willing to help you get started. So I think that is about it. Um, we're gonna go ahead and open it up to some questions. Does anybody have some, some questions? Um, I know we can't get through like everything that Piano Marvel does. Um, it does so much that it could be the sole source of all of your lessons from beginner all the way through doctoral studies and piano performance. I have a, I have a question. Um, I noticed that that each each um, person that taught, do they have a specific curriculum or syllabus that they're going by? I know the Piano Marvel has the booklets, but is there a specific technique that they're using or or set up to initially start Piano Marvel in a group setting, or is it just random? Let's just go to it. Can I answer that question? Sure. So, um, I've, and I, I want to answer because I've seen several people have asked me about it um, in the chat. So, I, I start out with the Piano Marvel curriculum. Um, I use that up through level five. Um, it really self it paces really well. So, at that point, I then have um, lists of pieces, classical pieces um, that um, I think somebody mentioned that in the library section, you can actually bundle your own pieces together into a list. And so, um, and so I've created a level six and a level seven, a level eight. The students really enjoy being able to say, you know, oh, I'm in level, you know, seven A or seven E or eight A. You know, the, it really gives them a, a framework to be able to talk to each other about where they're at. Mm -hmm. um, and I found that doing the Piano Marvel Method book one through five prepares them to just easily jump right into um, these lists of classical repertoire. So I'd, I'd be happy to share those lists. Um, um, Josh, I think somebody also asked earlier um, if you have like specific pieces or like how you have students choose their pieces, essentially. I think this would be a good time for you to talk about that. Yeah. So um, and so there's, you know, kind of two different modes that we get into. There's the normal class mode 
in which they are, um, like I said, either working through piano marble curriculum or after they get up to level six, they're working through the classical repertoire. Um, and at that point, like I said, I'd be happy to share the, my list of bundled um, of books that I have or pieces that I have put together. Um, and then there's also, then there's when we get to performances, there's kind of a different setting that we get into. And so um, like when we're getting ready for um, a festival, then I have lists of pieces that I have correlated to what they know in a certain level in piano marble and what is required for that particular um, classical piece of music. So I have a list of pieces for like, if they're in level three A to three B, then when it's time for a, to choose a piece for a festival, um, then we go and they look at those li that list of pieces in level three A, three A to three B that I've put together. And they pick one of those pieces. Usually is about four to six pieces that they get to choose from depending on what, their, what level they're at. Does that make sense? That does. That, that brings up the point that that piano marble is very, is built so that you can teach your way. Like yes. you, yeah. it's very flexible. You can build your own content. You can upload your own pieces. You can organize, create your own reports. You, I don't know if you knew this, Josh. Did you know you can build your own Sasser test? I was not aware of that. <laughs> yeah, you can make your own customized Sasser test with whatever songs you want to put into it. And then they would be able to go in and you can create a little leaderboard and it, you give that to all of your students. So they're playing the exact same piece. And then there's a leaderboard at the end. Um, there are so many things that you can do that like we can't tell everybody, but it's it's customizable so that you can teach your way because everybody has their own preference. And that's part of the art of teaching. You don't have to teach like everybody else. You should, in fact, be innovating around your students and doing things that help them. And so we try to give you tools that allow you flexibility, but you, you buy your own tractor and you use it how you want it. Um, but you got to learn how to use it. And that's the hardest part. Spend some time in research and development, experiment, try new things, research, and you will find that teaching piano becomes a joy, not a drudgery, like doing the same thing all the time. Michelle, there was a question for you. Can you use Piano Marble to teach online? Uh, yes, you can. I haven't you done like- Almost exclusively online, don't you? Yeah, I, I haven't done group online. Um, so I don't know about that as much as Cami does. She could tell you more about that. That's but not I true. Teach... I, just, I just joined a group you did yesterday online. And I think there was like 20 of us. Oh, that's true. I teach teachers in groups online. That's true. And we were all your students. We were we were all doing scales that day. And you that's true. And it, so, yeah, I, I suppose you're right. It, it really does work exceptionally well for the online setting. I haven't seen anything else that works better because you can have students share their screens with you. So you know exactly what's going on on their side. You, you can, can take over their, their screen. Clearly. Yeah, you can see their music. You can make annotations if you need to. Um, it's yeah, really, there's there's nothing better than Piano Marble for online lessons. Yes. If you pair it, pairing it with Zoom is phenomenal. Yep, that, that's what I do is Zoom. Mm -hmm. Great question. Does anybody else have any other questions? I had yeah. one question come in that I said I'd ask if I can just say that real quick. The question, and maybe this is more for Josh, um, but it was, how did your system prepare students for the National Music Teacher Association's piano exams? Um, I thought since we have so many teachers on here, maybe some people would have some answer for this teacher. It was for Lise Claret. Yeah, there are, there are actually lots of different, uh, the Royal Conservatory of Music, they all have very similar things where you do theory, you do sight reading, you do performance. And so you can customize it to work exactly how you want it to. I know Lori Dunn does Royal Conservatory. She's got a bunch of things that are ABRSM, sorry. And she's she's added in her own bundles and has her students passing off those, those songs. And then you use the Sasser to prepare students for their sight reading exam. I would say the theory, um, Cindy talked about the theory, but the theory is not as in depth as a lot of theory is. Um, it's more of a practical theory. You get to the theory when you get, when it's, meaningful to your performance of that area. 
So we, um, I would say you currently you might want to just keep using whatever theory you do or start and just start with seeing what's in Piano Marvel with the theory. But it's great for preparing students for exams. They're way more prepared. I've had some people say at the MTAC meeting that they are more prepared now for their sight reading tests than ever before, thanks to the Sasser. Also, the the chopped and minced um, learning uh, paths oh, yeah. in Piano Marvel those are huge for the actual part of like the performance part of the um, exams because That's most right. students don't get like they have problem issues little areas where they didn't quite get to 100% accuracy they would have no way of knowing if it's 100% accurate anyway unless they use Piano Marvel so those students who use that learn their piece to perfection a lot better than any other yeah, students yeah. can it's probably worth me showing that because I think it's the strongest component in the software and teachers think it's the sight reading. This is the one I use 90% of the time, even more than the sight reading. Um, let's see. Oops, I had that. I'll just open up a, a song over here. Uh, let's say, let's grab a piece. Now, I don't want to. There, there are any songs from any level of ability. So let's just pick something, maybe a pop song. Let's say you've got your student and imagine this could be a classical or whatever. Let's say if I go into the advanced piece and you're trying to learn this song, sometimes it's a pain in the neck to teach pop songs and it's not very much fun, but now it is super easy. I tell students, go into the mint slicing, start this First part is just measures one to 16 with the right hand only at three speeds. And so they systematically go through and this piece is chopped up into perfect learning segments for professional practice. Um, just give you a hint, this measure 28, let's say I'm working on this one. Um, and then I hit this practice button and now I'm gonna learn this song here. First part is just get the notes right. So when your students, they don't actually have to come to you for the help here. Now the, notice the timing isn't there yet because I'm just working on the notes at this point. And something's wrong there, you see that? So students don't have to ask you like, I'm just playing the wrong note. They learn instantly how to fix the notes and get the right notes so they're not practicing wrong notes. The flats is such an amazing tool. And I think this is why Josh Harris said his students love this because it really helps them practice effectively. And then they get this data here that helps them focus on what to fix. I got six notes wrong and it took me 58 seconds. I got a 75% on that. And so I would just do that over and over and over until I got up to about 100%. And then at that point, I'm ready to start working with the rhythm of the piece. So the rhythm happens with the background a couple Two, three, set. Gonna look at this and they say, okay, I missed the rhythm here. I can highlight and just work on that one little section. Um, or I can just try it again. But I think the biggest problem is that I didn't pay the price on my chart here and get this up to 100%. If I would have done that, my notes would have been much better, my score would have been better. But if they practice slow, they end up learning fast. And so this per, this is perhaps 
the most powerful tool on the planet for teaching people to learn to play their songs and practice effectively and efficiently. I will say you need to be prepared for something that I was totally not prepared for. When they start using this, they will learn their songs eight to 10 times faster, hands down. It is just that effective. The problem is they next they need another piece. And my repertoire of pieces, I had maybe 30, 40 songs in my like fun songs to play for students. That was plenty for student for the students at the pace at which they were learning. Suddenly, I had to learn a lot more songs that were really good performance pieces because they were going through it so quickly. So there's going to be a learning curve as you start leveraging the technology, but don't be frustrated. Look at it as something that will change your world. I could never go back to teaching without it because they learn so much faster. And now I'm addicted to the speed at which they learn. So when I have a student come to me and they, I show them first what the software can do before I ever talk about pricing, before I ever talk about, do you have a piano at home? And then they see how amazing it is and how fast I learn. You see the smile on their face and the parents are like, I never even knew this was possible. And then you tell them, do you have a keyboard at home, something to plug in? And they say, no. Well, I say, I've stopped taking students that don't have this. Here are your options. You can get this keyboard, this keyboard, or this keyboard, or I lend a keyboard to them. And I say, go home and get started. But they all, I've never once had a student say, ah, I'd rather do it out of the book, except for one student. He said, I don't want to do the technology, but I see your students perform and they're doing amazing. I want to play like them. And I told him, I'm sorry, if, if you want to study like the slow way, you're going to have to find another teacher. And two days later, they came back and they said, OK, I'll go get the technology because they know what kind of students I produce and they know my students love it. Uh, Cindy, you do you charge the same rate for private lessons as you do group lessons? Do you charge less for group? Cindy, you're muted. Oh, Can you hear me okay. now? Yep. How do I unshare my screen? Can you Josh, hear me Josh, are you now? able to unshare my screen? Yep, we can hear you, Cindy. And yes, Aaron, I'm going to stop you sharing. Thank you. I couldn't find the button. Yeah, I was concerned that that might be a, an issue that parents might think, oh, well, you're charging the same. But I do. In fact, um, they're, they can see the benefit of the group class in that in an hour I can get home a whole lot a whole lot a whole lot more done than in the half hour lesson half hour private lesson so yeah my prices are the same and um, I've even increased them as I feel like I'm offering more um, here in California my price is 120 I don't know how that compares to wherever you are in the country or even the world but yeah. That's it. And I have gone from over the last few years, I've gone from $80 to 120 um, based on what, as I progress as a teacher, what I can offer them, then I up my price. I don't make the, I lock people in at the price they start at. Um, but, but yeah, as I feel like I'm offering more and I'm a better teacher, then I periodically raise my price. So when you're getting started, I, I recommend that you learn to leverage the technology before you start charging more and putting them in groups because you could have, uh, it could backfire on you. If you don't know how to leverage the technology, they come in and if they're learning faster with one-on-one -on -one lessons and then they have a bad experience, then it'll backfire on you. So first, I would start one-on-one -on -one with lessons using Piano Marvel, learn to leverage the technology, get them learning at a faster pace, and then invite them to come in to do it with another student, a friend, and say, we're going to start working on some ensembles, some duets. And I've got a list of duets that are so entertaining and so much fun for students. Um, sometimes it's about just finding those pieces that are that just engage students. And we have a ton of them um, help. We have a Facebook group where Piano Marvel teachers get together and they, 
they share with their ideas with everybody. So we'll send out a link to how you can join that Facebook page, um, the group piano page, um, and some other things. And so I know we don't have a lot of time to dive really deep. We're already at an hour and a half. So I appreciate everybody coming to this lesson. Is there anything that I've missed that needs to be covered? Or can we, we could probably do that through email later. Is that priced through an hour or half hour is a question somebody's asking. Um, for me, it's an hour class. Okay. For me, or it's 45 five. minutes, but I always go over. Yeah. Because they're having too much fun. Yeah, I'll just mention too that, you know, we did record this webinar, so we'll be sending it to everybody in case you want to follow up and go over some things again as well. And um, we'll also uh, love to answer any other questions you guys have. You can reach out to us. Um, and uh, we've got a lot of great resources and we'd be also happy to connect you with some of the speakers today um, if, if you've got specific questions as well. Um, real quick, somebody said, is it $120 per hour? No, I think she said it was for monthly lessons, $100, $120 for the month. For the um, month. And they get one hour a week. And so that's excellent. All right. Thank you guys. Um, we appreciate you joining us. And I am so excited to see you jump in and start doing this because it will change your life. It will bring so much joy and excitement. Um, as Cindy would attest, it's fun. It is so much fun and it's relaxing. It does, like Dr. Pierce said, it does the heavy lifting freeing you to do more of the fun. Right. All right, we'll wrap this session up and we will talk to everybody later. Thank you very much.